Hello, welcome. I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilt as well, better known as PQW. Very excited to come to you and show you my new technique of quilting. Now, with this technique, I put a guarantee that I believe anybody can quilt beautifully using this technique. Now, I've given it the title of No Stress, No Pressure, No Free Motion Quilting. Now, I know there's so many people out there that have tried to free motion quilt and just can't get it. And I congratulate anybody that has put the dedication of practice and time into teaching themselves free motion quilting. And there's a lot of people that can do it, but there's a lot of people that can't. So this technique is for those people that have tried free motion quilting and can't get it. Now, I don't want stress to be on you, on you when you quilt. And I certainly don't want stress on myself when I quilt. I taught myself over, over a huge amount of years how to free motion quilt. But I just find it very difficult. As I've got older, I find it very difficult to manoeuvre a big quilt under the needle to do free motion quilting. Because not only do you have to move the quilt, you've got to get your stitch length even. Because for those that don't know about free motion quilting, once you drop your feed dogs down, your machine does no stitch length. You have to make the stitch by moving the fabric under the needle at the right speed. So if you have your needle going too fast and your fabric moving too slow, you're going to get very, very small stitches. If you have your needle going slow and you move your fabric fast, you're going to get very large stitches. So it's getting the rhythm and that's what challenges a lot of people. And not only is it the um, speed of the needle and the fabric that challenges um, a lot of people who have tried, it is learning to draw with the needle. Like most people at Free Motion Quilt don't transfer the design onto the fabric, they just draw with the needle and the fabric. Well, that's hard if you don't, if you don't know how to draw a shape. So in my technique, we don't have to do any of those things. Now, the no pressure part of the um, title that I've given this is I don't want pressure on myself when I sew, like I don't want pressure on my shoulders, my elbows or my back. And I certainly don't want pressure on my fabric. So in the second lesson, I'm going to show you how to release the pressure off the sewing foot on your sewing machine so that your fabric's going to move under the needle beautifully. And of course, we're not going to free motion quilt. But I just want to talk to you about a few of the tools that I feel make this technique work perfectly. Um, it took me quite some time to find the right tools. So I'm going to strongly recommend if you're going to try this technique, these be the tools that you um, use to uh, make it easy for you to be able to quilt. So the first thing I do is um, I use the sew slip mat. So this mat, this is how it comes. A lot of people will already own these. But for those that don't, it comes with brown paper on the back. Now the brown paper is on the back of this mat to protect this sticky side. This is tacky. It grips to the bed of the machine. Now the one I recommend and use is the one with the big cutout in that, which means that your feed dogs are still going to operate. The ones that have just the little tiny circle in the middle, they're designed for free motion quilting. Now once you put get this unwrapped, you're going to lay it across the bed of the machine and we'll cover that in the next lesson, how to set this up on your machine. But if you've been using this for quite some time and you find that it's now going to move and it's not grabbing to your machine, that means it needs a good wash in hot soapy water. So you just wash it, soak it in hot soapy water, let it soak there for a while, rinse it and then lay it out flat to dry, then put it back on your machine. Now the beauty of this mat is I now leave it on my sewing machine permanently. So for every bit of stitching I do, when I'm piecing my blocks, when I'm appliquing, when I'm quilting, when I'm sewing the binding on, if I'm doing making bags or my jelly roll rugs, this is always on the machine. Because what it does, it allows the fabric to slide under the needle so you're not got the pressure having to push it through. So that's the first tool I recommend. Now. Talking about my um, no stress, no pressure quilting, I do all my quilts quilt as you go now. 
So we are only going to be discussing quilting one block at a time. This technique probably won't work for anybody that has a very large quilt top and they want to quilt it in this method because we'd have to be dragging the quilt through the machine and turning it too many times um, under the needle. So this is just referring to any quilt as you go techniques. Now I use the titanium top stitch needles. I just find that these needles are brilliant. They penetrate through the three layers beautifully and they've got a very big eye because I like to use nice quality threads to quilt with. I use a lot of machine embroidery threads. I like fine, shiny threads to quilt with. I don't like a thick thread. I'm not particular on the weight of the thread I use. I'm, I'm particular on the quality of the thread. So I just find the titanium top stitch needles with the large eye let any of my fine threads run through the needle beautifully without getting a heat friction and splitting the thread. Now the best part about the titanium coated needles is they stay sharper so much longer than our nickel plated needle. So I would recommend investing in the size 70 or 80. I'm not fussy which ones I use. I go between the two. But one packet of these will outdo a normal packet of needles a hundred times. So they're a really good investment. The other thing I use, um, and, and because it's taken me quite some years to develop my quilt as you go technique to allow my quilts to lay really flat and to eliminate using a walking foot when I do any of my quilting or piecing the quilt together, I use the Hobbs Heirloom double-sided fusible wadding. Now, a lot of people know this is the wadding I always have recommended and used. It's 80% cotton, 20% polyester. It's fusible on both sides. Now, it's a very light fuse. Once I've finished the quilt and I wash it for the first time, all the fusible washes out, so there's no stiffness left in the quilt. So it really is a beautiful quality. It never peels through your fabrics. It never um, would need a walking foot because once we iron the three layers together, it doesn't move like um, a wadding would when we pin together. So that's the wadding I, I strongly recommend. Now, to, to prepare your blocks for quilting, I cut my backing, my wadding, and you don't have to cut the wadding much bigger. You can even cut it to the same size. But I always do make everything a little bit larger because any form of quilting, no matter what you use, will always pull in a little bit. The more you quilt on your pieces, the more they'll pull in. It's just a natural thing that happens. So cut your pieces, lay them all out on your ironing surface, and then with a very hot, dry iron, no steam, make sure it's dry, start from the middle, press down firmly, and you would normally use your big iron, but I'm just using my little mini iron. Just move it through. Now the nice part about this, and I think what scares a lot of people, when we mention the word fusible, a lot of people think, oh, I can't put the iron near that. Yes, you can. If I sat the iron on there, no glue goes to the base of my iron. It doesn't stick to your iron. It just is amazing to use. So we just move it through very slowly. Moving from edge to edge. If we move the iron too fast, it won't allow enough heat into the bat wadding to activate the fusible. So we just need to move it slowly over that surface. Once we get the top done, just flip it over, straighten out the back. Now, if you're ironing something down and you get, um, you know, you make a mistake, you can always pull it off and reposition it. Like I could re-iron this piece a thousand times and it will still stick. So just move it out and we press the back. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful product to use. I've got a few creases here, so I'll pull it up. Just move it around till we get it all done. Now we're ready to put a design onto our fabric. Just very, very nice to use. And you'll notice it's not going to move. But as I said, if I made a mistake ironing this up, I could peel it off. You can see how it's peeling off. I could reapply it. So it just doesn't lose its stickiness until it's washed, which is amazing. Now, I'm, I always now 
trace my design onto my fabric because I want to quilt a beautiful design on here. So we've designed a range of templates which I call Quilt As You Go Quilting Templates and I'm just going to show you our range so you understand what the templates are. So we'll come over here. So this is our set A. Now in set A we give you three different templates. There's the flower, the leaf, we turn it over and we've got the hibiscus flower. And I'm going to show you some of these um, quilted out as we move through the classes. We've got set B, and this is just the beautiful curved designs. And in this set, there are two different shapes. So you can, you can interact these templates together. They don't need to just stay as an individual. They are small, but we can enlarge these. And I'm going to explain all of that through this series of classes so you get an understanding of it. Set C, we have the clamshell, and on the back we have the half circles. This is an amazing set. You can create beautiful, beautiful line designs with these. Then we move on to our hearts. Now, not only can you use these for quilting templates, you can use these for applique templates as well. So they're, they're a dual purpose, which is great value to you. And then we move on to the star. And the star's amazing what you can do with that. And then in this series of classes, I'm going to also, also introduce you to my feather pack and show you that any single person on a normal domestic machine can quilt beautiful, beautiful feathers. So in lesson four, I'm going to be teaching you how to do your feathers. So stay tuned. There's a lot coming. Now we're just releasing our set F. Now in set F, there are three templates. There is the tulip. There's the leaf and the smaller, smaller bud tulip. So they're just amazing what you can do with it. And I'm going to show you how great this set is um, as applique. So in this pack, you get the three templates. I've just got the two here to show you the back and the front. So like if we flip this over, you see the other one. So now to put any design onto our fabric, I'm very particular about what I mark my fabric with because this is going to turn into a quilt and hopefully you're going to make lots of quilts using these techniques. I've been a person that's been caught out too many times by investing in the wrong marking pencil. Many, many years ago, I um, invested in a marking pencil and I brought it because of the price bracket. It wasn't an expensive one. I read the instructions very clearly and it told me, do not heat set. Now, I presumed ironing was heat setting. I was quilting a border and I used the marking pencil to trace all the feather designs onto the fabric so I could quilt. And I never ironed over it, but I didn't realise the light on my sewing machine was giving off enough heat to set the chemicals that must have been in that marking pencil because some years after I completed that quilt, and I washed it once, well, I washed it more than once, but on one of the washing occasions, when I took it out of the sewing machine, everywhere I'd marked with that marking pencil, my fabric had rotted. Not only the top fabric, the wadding and the backing had um, rotted wherever I'd marked with that marking pen. So that was the day I decided I needed to invest in a really good quality marking pencil. So I found the Bohin and I just love it. I've been using this for years and it comes, we sell it to you with a set of white leads and a set of black leads. So the leads will last you for a very, very long time and you just buy replacements when you run out. So if I'm going to put, say, this design onto this fabric, I'm going to use the white lead because I'm marking on dark fabric we need to have the lead out long enough to work through the split of the template. Now, just a very important little tip. Because this is a very fine lead, if I, at any stage drawing this design on, move my pencil on an angle, that lead will hit the lip of this template and it will snap. And you don't want to do that because it will waste your leads. So the way I suggest you use it, press down on your template to keep it really close to the surface of the fabric. Hold your pencil upright and trace. Just go through and trace 
Remember, keep that pencil upright. And you just go through and continue tracing. Now, in the next lesson, I'll, I'll um, just show you some of the designs I've got drawn up because by working out what you want to do with your template and what shapes you want to create and how much of this space you want to fill in with this one individual template, we can just move the template and keep adding to this to fill in the shape that we want. And you'd need to do a little bit of maths before you started to see whether you wanted to use the whole of this shape or portions of it. Like I could come back and fit this in here to create more petals. So there's no reason why you can't expand the shape. So see how we've just fitted this one in? I could come around and fit more petals in here. And I could then come back and put this section back into here. So remember, keep that pencil up upright, push down on the template. Now, if I was hadn't ironed my three layers together and I was just working off the top fabric, I could expect as I draw that the fabric would stretch. And that's another reason why I like to use the fusible batting because it's not going to stretch. So see how now I'm creating a total different shape just by using this very basic template. And we'll see lots more designs as we move through. So that's just a little bit of information on the tools. And I think it's very important that I introduce you to the tools that I recommend and that I use to get the res finished results that I'm going to get you to in lesson four, because I know every one of you can quilt beautifully. You just need to have the confidence. We need to let you s teach you how to set your machine up properly and how to relax, relax and get rid of that stress, get rid of free motioning and quilt on your machine by sewing on a line. So in our next lesson, we're going to um, set up our sewing machine. We're going to start sewing and we're going to show you how easy it is to maneuver this piece of fabric under the needle for you to become a very, very good quilter. So to next lesson, see you then. Bye for now.